next guest is Fernand Lopez, the head coach over at MMA Factory in France and home of the UFC interim heavyweight champ, Surreal Gone. Fernand, how are you, sir? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And as we uh, spoke a little bit off the air, Happy New Year to your to you and yours. Thank you. Happy New Year to you and everyone listening. Absolutely. Well, obviously a massive fight coming up for Surreal at uh, UFC 270 against Francis Ngannou. How excited are you and the rest of the team for the matchup? And uh, what's the energy like right now in the gym? Whoa, pumped, pumped and, um, and uh, you know, pumped, but again, kind of a little bit tense, nervous because, um, you know, you never know. This is hip, big boys throwing bombs. Everything can happen. And so uh, I can feel the energy. People are very glad of that, um, especially because we didn't expect to be at this uh, kind of stage. France, because France is the, the last country to get the, mm -hmm. the ban uh, removed. And uh, so it's kind of kind of weird to feel that that we are we, we are on top of of, of that uh, headlining, that kind of main event, the first one, uh, that kind of event, the first um, prepare view in, in 2022 uh, coming from France is exciting. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, I mean, how much does it mean to you to have your guy headlining the first UFC pay-per-view of 2022? As I said again, I'm, I'm proud. I mean, it's hard to do... Um, I'm proud. I'm proud to, to uh, the, the, both of them. I'm not um, anymore like technically my guys, but they are both born as a fighter and as a MMA artist in my gym. And uh, so we are, myself and my team, uh, we are really proud of that. Like uh, I saw today that my committee managers, post on MMA Factory and Management Factory, a picture of Cyril and Francis. And uh, I just uh, I just saw that and that was a good surprise for me. I, I was kind of, then you realize, you realize, oh, shit, we, we, I mean, we detected this young man and um, we helped him to get at that level during like the, 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 the the most part of his life as a fighter, I think he, he, he done like 12 or 40 fight with us in, in MMA factory and management factory. So we, uh, yeah, we're proud of that and definitely proud of Sirigan who did all the 10 wins with MMA factory. So uh, I feel kind of, I'm proud for that. A little bit sad of the, the mm. the falling out with us with Francis, uh, but um, again, this is live. Live is you know you around you you have a uh, uh, you have um, everything like live. I mean in a gym gym just live like live. You have some right. uh, friendship, love story, uh, sad story, breakdown, um, breakup story. You have some uh, trace on story. You have like a bunch of things happening in the life that then you have the, the, the same moral in a small gym. So it's okay. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the similarities and differences between preparing for a guy like Derek Lewis, who was Surreal's last fight, versus somebody who obviously you're a bit more familiar with, with Francis Ngannou? Uh, not that... I mean, like, yeah, you, I mean, to, in order to prepare a fight, I have protocols, mm -hmm. which is, you give me your, you give me, they give me the name, the match is on, contract sign, then I will go back to, uh, to watch the video of my guy right. one more time, make sure that uh, I will not leave any stone on turn it. I will go uh, watch my op my opponent guy video, which is Francis. Mm. And no matter if I know him or do not know him, I have protocol to follow to make sure that I do not forget anything. So I will watch all the fact that he did. Mostly the fact that 
he won because I'm not focused on what he what Fari lose because you don't have anything to lose right. to learn. You don't have that much to learn of on uh, the first fight of CP. I was there anyway, and uh, I know what happened. You don't have anything, not much to learn about Francis Ngannou, Derek Lewis. But what you have to learn is how good was the improvement on the last fight. So I watch and watch that then again. That that's that footage again and again and again and again. And um, and you go from there. So you figure out how you can solve the problem. When you have how you can solve the problem, you give a call to the conditioning coach. This is what the fight would look like. This is where we we, we need Cyril to improve as in the conditioning, the stamina, the the, the footwork. This is what we're looking for. So in order to have that, this is the type of the conditioning that we would like to have. You give mm -hmm. the call to the conditioning, mental conditioning. This is what we're looking. We'll be facing a former teammate. We'll be facing one of the harder hitter ever and ever. And uh, we need uh, Francis to have a good mental going up to this fight. To uh, the, the way he will approach the fight in terms of communication in terms of when the trash talk which shows up because at some point of the fight week there might be things very painful or hurtful to hurt we need to prepare him to that we need to prepare him to all day eventually we need to prepare him of in on talking about the deep war mm -hmm. he never really got on the deep war not because they never tried to bring him that in the deep water, but he, he, he make it to, to, to touch, to turn the fight on his advantage every time. So we need to make sure that the conditioning coach talk with, make things happen, the mental conditioning, make things happen with him. And then I uh, will sit down with all the coaches in the gym, you know, um, and make this work about the, the, the camp, the sparring that we choose, we will make sure that we don't go choose a guy big or looking kind of big of friends in Gano. Anyway, you don't find that out there. You will not find a guy stronger than Francis who is smarter like him or have a knowledge on the martial art anyway. So you need to make choice. We choose to choose a guy with a skill of speed and timing, right, which is Nazurin Imavov. Very mm -hmm. hard for Francis Ngannou to match the speed of Nazurin Imavov. Very hard to find a heavyweight match a timing, wrestling timing of Nazurin Imavov. Very hard to find that. And then you add on that a guy like Marcel Sichev. Uh, he was world champion in Greco Roman Wrestling Junior. Right. Two fight. He just won his last fight in RS. The guy is very young, fresh, built like, like a, a monster, new style of fighter. He can wrestling, he can kick, he can take you down. He have the unlimited stamina. And you put, you add him in in that in that thing because he will bring you that brutality mm -hmm. that Nasurin Imavov will not bring because Nasurin Imavov is a maybe the middleweight, but Marcel she says is a full heavyweight. So you bring that to the table. You bring a guy who can bring the experience because Nasurin is number twelve now in the UFC ranking. Bring him to the table to bring this the speed, the timing. Bring Marcel for the the, the, the power put everything together with all the stuff. And then how, this is how you, you you prepare the fight. But again, you need to make the difference. Derek Lewis is on the paper, the, the, the god of knockout. He's the right. knockout artist. Okay. Yeah. The number said that. He's the, he has the best record on the knockout in the UFC story. Mm. But have nothing to do with Francis. Francis is a freaking athlete. Freaking ha Francis Gano have a very good speed. 
very decent football, intelligent. He can defend take down. Mm-hmm. Even though what they're saying that he, he didn't improve on the defense is irrelevant for me. Mm-hmm. The sprawl that we had is not the best sprawl that we should have. The, fro- the sprawl that we, have, we had happened after the timing was perfect. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you get it. People, do, they are not really watching the fight before saying things. They're like, oh, the improvement was so good. Oh, my God. No, no. Yeah. Francis Ganu did improve in a lot of things, including the mental conditioning, the mm-hmm. state of mind approaching the fight, the state of mind try to set things up. But in terms of defending the takedown, oh my God, it didn't improve at all. Mm-hmm. Go and check the video. The timing was perfect as fuck. Yeah. CP went there and controlled the leg, full, fully controlled the leg. Mm-hmm. After that, the timing is, is done. Then you can use the strength, the strength because Francis Ngannou is powerful. Mm-hmm. So pinning the head of CP down, most of him and take out the leg, yeah, that's possible with a guy with a 105 kilo. It's, it's easy to do. But again, on the timing, talking about the timing, it was so late on timing. I mean, he literally lay his body, all his body on CP, which is... Yeah, delayed. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I think, I think so. This, this, what we try to do now is not to bring the opposite so we can match with him because, again, like I said, Francis is athletic, not like Derek Lewis. We really need to separate those two guys. Uh, Francis can run after you, like, in the time and, and, and last on running after you while Derek Lewis will run on two steps and then stop because you don't want to, you don't want to, don't want to yeah. gas out. So it's different matches. And, um, and again, um, preparing Francis when I know Francis if in different, even regardless of what Francis is trying to say. Francis is saying recently, Fernand Lopez don't know shit about me. This is three years and a half we didn't meet. Right. Correct. But in the same, in the in, in another hand, he's saying, I know everything about Fernand Lopez. I know how he think. I know how they, they do the game plan. I know everything about him. That do not make sense. When you arrive in my gym, I was the coach already with coach mentality, which is observe. I was observing you since day one. I know how you break. I split with you in your bed. Mm-hmm. I know your pain. I can tell your conditioning. I can tell physically what is your injury. I can give you your injury story. I can give you all your historic injuries. I can give you your fear. When you, when Francis Ngannou was on two loss streak, he went back to Paris and asked me to keep training, to keep training him. A truth that I said to him, I think is enough. I will not train you anymore because you don't listen. But he asked me to train him. I eventually accept, went back with him in China, Beijing, where we fought Curtis Blade Wait, for the yeah. second time. Mm-hmm. In that camp, I know all Francis' fear. Mm-hmm. I know what is his nightmare. So either you say, because we spent three years without knowing each other, without seeing each other, I don't know you and you don't know me, 
either you say, you know me and I know you, but make your shows, my friend. It's kind of complicated to say that you know me and I don't know you. Right. So um, I don't think it's an advantage to know Francis Ngannou because, mm-hmm. as I said, he knows me. Right. He can profile myself. He can profile me and he know my mentality. He know the, our school, how we have a school looking. This, our school can tell you what kind of father coming from our, my place. The first guy that we have in UFC was Taylor Lapilus. Mm-hmm. If you see Taylor Lapilus firing, it's kind of delusing. Tosh, we're not getting Tosh. Mm-hmm. If you take Francis Gano, that's the same thing that we brought him. If you take Nazurin Imavov, looking quite the same. If you take Surigad, looking quite the same. So MMA Factory, we have a signature. And I believe because we spend many time with Francis, he can think as I'm thinking. So that's why I'm saying for me, it's equal. The advantage saying that I know him or he know me is equal. I don't think we're going to use, I don't think you're going to make the difference. But again, I think that's wrong for him to think that I don't know him because I know him very well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, Getting back to Surreal, one thing that really sticks out about him when just watching his fights is he always seems to be at least one step ahead of his opponents. Um, what is it like to coach somebody with his fight IQ, which you've talked about before, and his overall skill set? Make things easy. Yeah. I mean, make things easy because you, you don't have to explain too much or explain everything. Mm-hmm. You kind of pick everything very fast. Um, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy to be with a guy that you can teach him a submission in the locker room mm-hmm. and he just give you that perfect way in the fight like two hours after that. Wow. It's, it's crazy. I mean, you have a guy that he don't even know all the fundamental right. on jujitsu. Like he's not doing the, the he's not using the, the gi on jujitsu. He don't yeah, even know still, all the fundamental. You know, yeah, still relatively but, new. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the guy can masterize the electric chair, the banana split, the, the the twister, whatever you give him, because he kind of. He kind of play with his body. This body mm-hmm. allow him to do that. There's techniques that no matter how good you are, because your body, because of myself, because of my short legs, I couldn't use a triangle. I don't remember myself tapping someone with a triangle. But I can do a kimura. I can do you. I, I can choke you. I can, because my body allow me to do that. Mm-hmm. And Cyril is kind of weird, like, even he's big, he can do everything. He can, he can just do everything with his body. His right. body is kind of flexible, kind of, you know, he can adapt. So for me, it's freaking good. Yeah. Like, as a coach, it's like you was driving an old car without, you know, anything automatic, and then you, they give you the perfect car to drive. You just yeah. have to push a button, and then the car can park assist with, with, with the car can the car can just you know whatever you want to do with the car, the car can do that for you. This this how I'm seeing this. It's very easy for me to do, and plus to be honest with you, the fact to deal with an intelligent guy is not only good for the sport. Mm also good for the environment. Right. The, the thing that surrounding you, the negotiation, the deal negotiation, the business negotiation, because it's not complicated to understand things and to, to understand how the negotiation works. This is, I mean, this is very important to, to understand how a gym can work, what the gym expects from you, what right. you expect from the gym, how the company can work, what is the UFC waiting for us? What we can give to the UFC? What is so easy, so relaxed mm. because of the understanding of 
what's going on actually and really. Yeah, it makes your job a lot easier too, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I will not change my place with any other, I mean, like any other coach or manager. I feel like this is the right place with this. I mean, it's so freaking awesome to kind of just talk with someone that, like sometime I'm still in the old mood. Like I need to make sure I explain everything, break down everything before even doing anything. And he's like, why are you asking me this coach? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. because I want to make sure you understand. It's like, are you, are you crazy? You're my guy. You, I mean, you, you're my agent. <laughs> you are, I mean, like, I follow you. I'm, and, and, uh, and this is make perfect sense. You told me that last time. So it's clear for me. I don't need to hear that 10 times. It's perfectly like transparent for me. Just go ahead, do whatever you have to do, coach. This is how easy it can make my, my life, um, you know, my, my, my life right now. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the winner of this fight will more than likely get John Jones next. Now, yeah. I know, obviously, you're not looking past this fight. I know that. Um, but what are your thoughts on how Surreal matches up with John Jones? Just the matchup itself. Exciting. Mm. Uh, I think... Um, they, they, they are going to meet it no matter what happened in the next fight, no matter what happened in January 22, I believe John Jones and Sir Gan, they are going to fight down the, line, down the road at some point. I mean, right. him coming everywhere, there's no bunch of heavyweight out, out there, out there. they going to fight at some point. Uh, ah, man. Fight IQ versus Fight IQ. Yeah, great matchup. A lot of experience versus not that much experience, but a lot of freshness, a lot right. of, you know, so, whoa, I think there's not a lot of fighter ready to take the chance to put this, themselves in the situation that they can be out of balance and be, uh, be losing the advantage. Right. What I mean right. is that if you see John Jones fight, he's willing, even he's a wrestler, the wrestler do not give the ball, they take you down. But he's willing to turn the back and throw you an elbow, a spinning elbow, right? You don't see much fighter in heavyweight division throwing spinning. Everything spinning is careful for heavyweights. They yeah. don't want to take that risk. They want to rely on what they have on, first, on front of them, which is left and right. But if you think Sirigan can throw spinning elbow, a back fist, Sirigan can throw you spinning kick. Guess what? John Jones can throw spinning kick also. He can throw spinning elbow. Whoa, freaking fight. Absolutely. And, and that matchup in general, I feel like is, is very similar from a stylistic standpoint, but also from, I mean, obviously just what you mentioned before, fight IQ versus fight IQ. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Off the, fight off IQ those. versus fight IQ. And also because of John Jones, not a very authentic heavyweight, even mm -hmm. that he, he lifts a lot and will shows up heavy. I think the fact that Cyril is not that powerful as fencing Ganu yeah. will equalize thing with John Jones coming from light heavyweight and the fight will be brilliant. I mean, like that's a match, that's a matchup to do. But again, uh, even I'm pretty sure they're going to fight 100 mm. percent Uh, we cannot avoid that collision. Uh we just focus on that 22 January. I mean, 22 January, January 22. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, you mentioned Francis a little bit earlier. Um, I'm not sure if you heard about this, but he spoke on his YouTube channel about the claim that you made earlier about how um, allegedly Nganu tried to stop Surreal from getting into the UFC. And yes. he addressed that on his YouTube page and really called you evil and manipulative. And I just want to give you the opportunity to respond to those remarks. 
if if Francis denied that he didn't tell me I'm not telling you something that I heard from Mingmena mm. the matchmaker I'm not telling you something that I heard from someone else I'm telling you something that I heard from Francis Ngannou himself. Mm -hmm. If he said that it's not true, he's a fucking liar. Right. Let me say that once again. I didn't say that Francis sold to mash making Migmenad, do not sign Cyril Gan. What I'm saying is that Francis Ngannou told me, coach, I had, I saw uh, Mick and Mick asked me, is it true that Cyril Gan, a kid from your gym, is ready for the UFC? Mm -hmm. and, he, and, and he said to me, I said to him, he's a good young kid. He will be good. But because I didn't want me to think that we we agree to have the same statement I mentioned mention that he's not good yet for the UFC but he will be good that's coming from Francis Ngannou mouth mm -hmm. if he say that this is not true he's a fucking liar I mean I'm begging you to call him back and ask him, now that I clarify everything with exactly the word that he used, if he's saying that this that I'm saying mm -hmm. is, a, is not true, then he's a fucking liar. Right. Again, I'm letting you make your deduction mm -hmm. and make your extrapolation, think whatever you want of that segment. But for me, it's weird. Right. If, you, if I'm from your team, and they ask me if you are good to sign to the UFC, I will just say yes, fucking yes. If you come to me, I'm the manager, I'm, I was your agent, I'm Sirigan agent, and you tell me, coach, I didn't say fully that is good now for the UFC, I said that is good and you will, you will keep improving. But because I wanted that to sound true and I didn't want them to maybe think that we agree on a statement, I said this. If you say that to me, excuse me, but I'm not thinking you are playing the team. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure you are working and same thing as a teammate should say. Yeah. Again, I'm not surprised for that anyway. Because mm. again, I don't think at any time of his life, Francis Ngannou ever thought that Cyril was the kind of guy to face him one day. Mm. I remember Veronica Macedo. She's a, a UFC fighter flyweight. Mm -hmm. She have a postcard, one of the best in UK. She asked Cyril Francis Ngannou. Now that now, uh, uh, Cyril Gan is in the UFC and getting in the top 15, how do you think about him facing you one day? And Francis Ngannou laughed and he was like, I don't really understand what you're asking. Make him fight first. Make, right. him, make him claim first the ranking. Like, yeah. this is irrelevant for me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, this kind of young guy, I don't deal with them. I don't face with them. This is what I'm talking about, Francis. Mm -hmm. He okay. always look Sirigan down. And he's kind of surprised. They're talking about him. The guy just have, he was too fight when that question from Migmena to Francis mm -hmm. so it was it was only two five right so I think 
Francis Ngannou do, do, didn't expect that to go that fast and didn't see that coming. So I totally understand him saying to me, well, you know what? The guy is not ready because I don't want you to, uh, you know, uh, you know, this, I mean, uh, uh, I would not take a conclusion on that. I just mm -hmm. let you know what is said to me, yeah. not to someone else, to myself. Yeah. And I, and I feel like on that topic, I mean, it's one thing to, for him to deny it, but it's also another thing to call you evil and manipulative. I mean, I feel like that's, that's, that's more than just a denial. That's, that's an attack on you and, and your gym and your team. Well, um, uh, that's, that's how Francis Ngannou is. Mm. Again, I will not take any conclusion of that. I'm letting you guys the reality. Right. This is a man that took you from the street, helped you to stay on his gym, four years without paying any fees. Give you apparel, give you sponsor, mm -hmm. give you money. Give you the gym to sleep in the gym if you want. Give you the place that you can have a shower in the gym. Mm -hmm. Give you the opportunity to fight in MMA while you want. You was killing him to fight in the boxing. This is a man that was giving you some cash so you can get some food when, while you were saying, I didn't do jujitsu because I'm starving. Mm -hmm. Like you, you blackmail me because you don't want to do jujitsu. And I'm like, okay, if you do jujitsu, I will pay you. I will give you money to go and have some food. This is that person that you call evil. Mm -hmm. How come that when you was three and one, I'm the one who called Joe Silva, who had to Joe Silva, please take this guy in the UFC. Right. And then Joe said, no, when you was four and one, I, I went back again. Joe said, no, you are not ready. Till I called my friend, Thiago Okamura, manager of another fighter, who was already known by the UFC. And I asked him to have a deal so we can fight this guy. And the winner of the fight will go to the UFC and then we will share on, on the guy or with, with the guy. So this is how I become, I will, I become co-manager with Thiago Kamura. When you have Francis talking on his YouTube channel or wherever he's talking, mm -hmm. he's saying, no one have ever believed on me. Mm -hmm. Everyone said to me, you cannot make it. You will not make it. This is a lie again. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I was saying to you, you can become a champion. Mm -hmm. I have video on internet saying that you saying that Lopez said to me, if I'm purple belt, I will take the UFC belt. If I'm purple belt on Jiu-Jitsu, I told you that. So how come you are going out there saying that since you are a kid, everyone told you that you are no one, they never believe on you, they, think, they thought you was fool. No, this is how, this is the place that you guys in America, you say, He's full of shit. Right. Francis Ngannou is full of shit. Mm -hmm. Saying that no one believes on him is a lie, a big lie. Because again, I have the proof that I pushed him and he was one of the early signing in the UFC. He was only five and one right. when he got to the UFC. Mm -hmm. If you take out Ken Velasquez, no one have signed that early in the UFC. So, again, instead of saying thank you, maybe my coach is, is mistaken. Maybe my coach is forgetting. Maybe my former coach just forgot what happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mick 
told something wrong to my coach, he chose to say, my coach is a evil and a manipulator. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's what I'm talking about. This is Francis. Mm -hmm. He have that mentality of, how to say that, uh, complotist mentality. Right. Oh, the UFC, they try to, they try to bring me down. Oh, you know what? This, the footage that they have in New York, that was a setup. Everything was set. What the fuck are you talking about? I was, right. I, I'm the one who chose to be in that place because we was going from the press conference to the medical to have some seizures on Nasuri Nimabov eyes when I found in a TV where they were showing the interest of Pereira a guy coming from uh, Glory, middleweight right. fighting in the UFC. So mm -hmm. I was really interested of that. And we sent there, even the, the, the guy was saying, let's go to the medical. We stood there. That's how we saw a lot of people going on, a lot of VIP. Usman Camaro went there. A lot of people was the star, that the, 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 the guest star was going through that, that corridor. And we saw Francis coming. So don't tell me that they set this place only for Francis. I right. went there accidentally. I saw a lot of people going there. They had nothing to do with the polemic with Francis and Cyril. So he has that mentally say, they manipulate. He said they manipulate the, the footage that we was training. Let me ask you something. If you want to say that they manipulate a video, tell me that the broad, the the the, the accelerate the, the 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 speed of Siri again and the slow your speed. Right. Then we can say we manipulate. Tell mm -hmm. me that they they put someone else and they said that there was you. No, that footage is Francis Gano. Mm -hmm. What is true is that that footage do not tell everything that happened in every training because right. there were so many training where Francis Ngannou edged Cyril and so many training where Cyril edges Francis. Mm. But there's no any manipulation. Come on. Like, yeah. Cause he's, if, cause he's basically been saying that it's, it was meant and released to basically set him up is what he's been saying. The, the footage of the training footage. Yeah. The sparring footage. Yeah. That's, Okay, how to set him up? How yeah? How do you set someone up with that? Like mm -hmm. when I give you the footage, if you recognize that is you on the footage, right? The only thing that you can say is that they show a part that I'm not brilliant of that, mm -hmm. which makes sense, which is true actually. Mm -hmm. But you do not say that. They manipulate. Okay, let me break you down something. Let me tell you something right now. Mm -hmm. In that footage, Francis Ngan do not want me to release all the footage. He do not want, uh, it's not me releasing, it's my comedy manager. Mm -hmm. Francis Ngan do not want my comedy manager to release that footage. Mm -hmm. Listen, in that specific training, Francis Ngan eat a body knee in the liver sat down, stopped the training. This is fact. Wow. So if I wanted to release a footage showing a bad side of Francis, this is what I will show. Mm. If Francis is saying that this is not true, tomorrow I will, if he's saying that it's not true, I will release the footage. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't, my community manager didn't want to realize that footage because yeah. of, we have a privacy in the gym. When God trains your gym, they count of you to keep things in the training private. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. But again, as the MMA becomes something modern, you still want to communicate in your gym. If you go to extreme couture, 
the gym that they have, you can find out people training with Francis. I just saw a training of Blaovi, Black, Black Oil versus Onward, yeah. mm-hmm. Black Oil versus Francis Ngano. Mm-hmm. If I ask you who has the the advantage on that video, what would be your answer? Well, I would say, uh, well, it would depend what the what the footage shows, but I feel like stylistically, I feel like Blahovich brings a lot more to the table. Okay, in that video, you can see Fensingan mm. beating up Blackhawk, mm. literally on on timing, on striking, on takedown. Mm. This is the video online right now. You can go and check the video. Mm. Will you say, okay, will you allow Black Hoy to say, oh, Francis is a bad guy. He is a evil. He manipulated the video. What the fuck are you talking about? Mm. To show a video that one part of Francis was dominated you. That's all. Yeah. You can say, Francis can say, I remember when I knocked the fuck out of Cyril in the training. He should say that if you want to say, which never happened. Mm-hmm. He can say, I took Cyril down in a training, which happened already in my gym. But don't fucking say like, they are manipulating people's mind. What the right. fuck are you talking about? Yeah, and basically accusing you of intentionally trying to you know, almost swing it in Surreal's favor, which, you know. Which is not true. Sense. Again, what I'm saying is that, first of all, we know that we are intelligent people. Mm. The training session would not show, would not give you what will happen in the fight because mm. Francis Gano is a powerful guy. Mm. So when he's training, not using the UFC gloves, um, he don't have the same impact. And also he, not, he do not throw with the full power. So we know that anyway, technically speaking, Cyril Gan can put the display of technique because the treat in front of his is not that dangerous. Mm-hmm. We know that you don't need to go out there and say they are good on manipulation. What, the, what are you saying concretely? Yeah. Where see, Okay, be specific. Which part the manipulation? Mm-hmm. Our gym have two committee manager. They need to push video out there. No matter which video they put out there to try to sell the, 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 the membership, there will be there will also always be someone saying, oh, I'm not happy because they, they show the part that you was taking advantage, you was on top of me. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy on this. So again, if it's that manipulation, having a part of video, not putting the part of video where Francis is sitting down and Cyril Gan coming, give him the hand. Mm -hmm. Come on, boy, let's go, let's go, don't sit. And and Francis is like, no, it's over. I'm I'm tired. I, I can't. And so yeah. I don't really understand the point of that footage saying that I'm evil. I really want to ask him which part I become evil. At yeah. what point someone who was with you give you to, the opportunity to have a job so that you can become a world champion. Didn't believe you saying that you are going to the boxing. Mm. Believe that it can give you the good way to get to the top of the wall with the MMA, give push as harder than it could to sign you to the UFC, push as harder than it could to bring you to the belt. First fight with Stipe, went back with you when you was down and help you to win the fight against Curtis Blade. That was a fight 100% trained by MMA Factory. 100% the 
the corner was myself, mm. Christian Pumbu, uh, the, the, the Bellator former Bellator, yeah. mm. Martin Otu. That was three guys from MMA Factory with Francis Ngannou. We went there in China, won the fucking fight. He called me again to bring to help him to win the fight with Ken Velasquez. And then we fall out. Mm. At what moment do you decide that I become an evil? I don't mm. really get it. I, I don't I don't get it either. And, and I really do appreciate your response and, and the clarification because I feel like a lot of people are are wondering. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm sure you're exhausted talking about you and Francis's relationship, but I really do appreciate the honesty and, and the clarification. Um, I do have time for a couple more. Uh, first off, Nasruddin Imavov. How yes. good is this guy, and what can fans expect from him in the UFC in 2022? Freaking good. Uh, um, um, we have a, a podcast here in France named Last Year. And in that podcast, they asked me who do I think will be the breakout uh, and the guy that will shock people in 2022. And I said, I feel very bad to say that because it's from my gym, mm. but I really think that Nasuddin Imavov is the one who will, will impress the world in 2022 because mm. uh, I've been impressed with him. If, even uh, I'm in coach. I've been impressed because I didn't give him the easy path. I didn't, like, when I sent him to the UFC and Migma asked me, how do you want to play with this kid? Mm. I said, give him, give me the best that you Throw can. Throw him right in there, yeah. Mm. Throw in, and he asked me, are you sure of this? I said, yeah, let's go. And um, they give him guys like um, the, the, his last opponent uh, Edmund Shabazian Edmund Shabazian mm-hmm. even before that with a with a, with a oh my god before Edmund Shabazian that was a top 20 in the UFC 19 uh, I forgot the, the, the I name can the I can look it up right now let's yeah. go let's go let's check that <laughs> I got um, you that's this yeah. is the uh, this is the benefit of having two screens One yes second. Let's and um, so, uh, so Ian Heinish, yes, Ian Heinish was a big challenge, like that kind of challenge that you were kind of afraid that maybe I will get him bite a piece of meat that he cannot show, but he, he, he passed the test very good. And then one day with Edmund Shabazian, and again, that was kind of, kind of big piece of meat. Mm. And he shoot out again, swallowed it again, very easy. I really think that um, um, we are ready to to go for the top five. Yeah, I, I think I think in twenty twenty two, the guy will. I mean, if they give him the opportunity, it will kind of. I mean, it's it's ready to go there. Right, and and. Talking about a time frame for his next fight, I'm not sure how far into details you're allowed to get, but is there a certain time frame in terms of when fans can expect him back in the octagon? And and April. April? Okay. And is there a specific type of opponent or a certain name that is in the mix per se? Top 10. Okay. Gotcha. Well, we're Uh, very excited to see him. I can can say more than that, but he's a top 10 and he's on on a – the the, the 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 first part of April. Well, we're very excited to see him. Definitely a lot of potential there. Um, final question for me. Uh, what is your prediction for UFC 270? And uh, how does Surreal get it done? I don't know how, but this fight, I don't think it's going to the end. I don't see that going to the end. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is... Um, as far as we are talking about uh, sport going, this is probably one of the best, if not heavyweight fight ever. Oh yeah, and Dana I, I, Dana White's been talking all about it too. Yeah. Well, Dana White is normal. This is his business. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. he's selling his, his sauce, like they say, but. Not only dinner, what you have a bunch of people out there thinking that this is Daniel Cormier is 
Heavyweight champ said that this is probably the best. I had Ariel Awani two days ago on the phone. He said to me, this is the best fight that we ever had in the heavyweight. That's coming from Ariel Awani mouth. I, I had, who else? I have a Shelson and saying the same thing. I have, I mean, there's a lot of people there thinking that uh, this is one of the fact that people on this era was, will look at as uh, Muhammad Ali was going in Kinshasa at the time. And then people that witnessed that fight was very like blessed to witness mm. that. So as a, as, a, as a sport man, as a sport fan, I will, I will I love to have my popcorn sit there and just be there, not walking that night, just enjoy the show as a sport going, because you have the, 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 the best expression of strength mm -hmm. that you, you ever had in, in a mortal guy with no weapon against the the best expression of fire IQ you never had in that level in that division and uh, the two are going to collide on uh, January 22 mm -hmm. so I don't know how you can miss that I mean like uh, if, if I was at home I would pay my my pay for that away I don't know how you can miss that yeah Absolutely. And before we go, you're not only just a coach, but you're also a promoter as well. So tell us a little bit about your promotion and uh, what you can expect for 2022. Ares, Ares is my promotion, Ares Fighting Championship. And um, Ares is um, what we try to do is just to bring uh, the best prospects that we think that they can go in the UFC. If mm. you have, if you have the level of that you think that you're going to be the next thing in the UFC, or if you just get out from the UFC and then you think that you can go back to the UFC as Moreno did and become a champ, mm -hmm. have your manager ring me. Have him write me to the Instagram or Facebook or whatever you have. But again, uh, that's what we're doing. We're signing the kind of people that they will shock the world in couple five. We're signing people as Cyril Gan. Mm -hmm. This is this is what inspired me. Yeah. When 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 I first brought Cyril Gan for the for uh, um, um, a, a world title in mm -hmm. MMA, Cyril was zero zero in MMA. Right. Like they, uh, the 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 TKO uh, CEO was looking for a heavyweight contender mm -hmm. to match against Adam Daishka, who at the yeah. time was the best prospect for the UFC. And I went to him and said, I have this young kid that can do the championship. And he mm -hmm. asked me the record. And I said, he do not have any link record because he never fought in MMA. And he said to me, you are crazy. Right. I've seen you someone that will face an unbeaten and defeated fighter, a killer who is collecting knockout, and you're bringing me a green guy, zero fight. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's have a bet. If your guy can pass the second round, then you never deal with me anymore in my life. And you stop dealing with all my fighter in the TKO. And he said, yes, let's go, let's try. And after two fights, the UFC just signed Cyril Gunn. That's the kind of guy that we're looking for, Ares. Absolutely. And, and that's why Cyril Gunn decided to invest on Ares. Mm -hmm. Cyril Gunn is now, uh, he has some stock option in Ares. Cyril Gunn now has one part of Ares. Oh, very cool. Yes, so now Cyril Gunn is a promoter also. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah. So uh, we 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 basically try to uh, be the best organization in Europe in Africa. Mm -hmm. We got stopped by the fact that we were about to to 
have our show in South Africa, but the pandemic stopped everything. So now in 2022, we will do all our show in Paris, but having a lot of African there so we can have a pure talent coming from Africa and pure talent coming from Europe and some guy coming also from all of the world, America, Brazil, whatever you have. So this is RS, that's what mm. is RS. And we, uh, uh, yeah, we we, 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 uh, we will announce that soon. I, I can announce that right now for mm. the TV deal, but we'll announce that soon, but um, we will be worldwide. Well, that is very exciting. Well, uh, Fernand, thank you again so much for the time. I appreciate it. We can't wait for the big fight uh, later this month, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Loki. And, um, and um, man, I wish you the best for this year. And, um, and again, thank you to have me as us in your, you know, in your show. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.